Well, it's now time to go ahead and start the notification. Once you've configured all these other tabs, and we're not ready to see the history yet, because we haven't started it yet, then uh, we need to go ahead and, and start this up, and then take a look and see if we're getting any results. I'll go ahead and check everything in first. And you'll notice if you try to start up a notification that hasn't been checked in yet, you'll be prompted. Now, this particular notification, the one I demonstrated earlier, is already started. I'll go ahead and stop it. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and start it up. But when we start it up, there is something that's required. You're going to have to make sure that you've got the right services application running. Uh, this is going to be the Pi Notifications service. That that has to be running in order for this notification to actually start. So uh, if I take a look at this, I'll look under all the Pi services here. Now here it is. It's called the Pi Notification Scheduler. And it is started on this machine. Uh, if you're not running this, if you happen not to be running this scheduler at this point in time, then you'll get a unique error message. I just want to show you what that is. It's basically going to uh, tell you that uh, it's kind of a no-go. It's not going to work at this point. But it does toggle this in a state that when you do get around to starting up this scheduler, it will go ahead and start scheduling the notifications. So, see, at this point, we haven't grayed that out. We still know that this is available to start. And if you do try to start it, you'll get an error message. We'll throw an error message saying that we really can't start that, but it's been to toggled. Yeah, there we go. Unable to start notification. No Pi certif notification service is running. But as you can see, we've toggled this into the on position. So all we need to do is make sure that this is running at this point. OK. Now, as I demonstrated earlier, the big finish to this particular example would be to go ahead and start uh, waiting. Yeah, we need to just kind of wait for some some values to change here. Uh, or what we can do, and this is, I think, an invaluable tip for those of you who are doing testing on notifications. We can go into our system management tools and just kind of goose the system into changing some values for you. Now you may, of course, not want to be doing this on a production system uh, on tags that are production tags. So I would do this using some test, you know, test data references first. But if you are at the point where you'd like to test your notifications, if I go into the data section of our system management tools, choose the archive editor, this is where I can go ahead and test this notification. I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Yeah, the uh, the tag name I'm going to use here is, well, let's see what it needs to be. If I remember correctly, my notification is looking at monitored tags. It's looking at that element called tag CDT158. So what Pi tag is that? Well, I need to go out to my element section of AF and determine the name of the Pi tag. Now, of course, I, I say Pi tag because that's the data reference we're making here. If this were a an entry in a relational database, then of course you'd have to go out and, you know, if you find that this is a, a table lookup, go out and test this by changing that entry. But in this case, I can see uh, from here that that is a tag called MyCDT158. And there it is. That's the tag name right there. So I can go out and using my archive editor, I can start kind of goosing this data. I'll just type in the name of that tag, MyCDT158. I could have also used the tag search, and I will force this to retrieve the most recent, was this two hours of data? Let's go back for two days worth of data. Yeah, so there's some data. This is all kind of mock data that I've been using for testing purposes. And I'm going to scroll down, and let's see if we can force this to go into an alarm state. Uh, I'll go ahead and put in, say, 275. I'll go ahead and save this. And the end result should be, you know, if we look at our notification, it is a notification that's running. It's a notification that takes that as its trigger. And it says that if it goes over the 250, it'll be in a my high state, not a high high, but a my high state. Let's go into history. And here's the big finish here. We see that it seems to be in the right state. It seems to have fired. And it also has sent the notification to the appropriate subscribers.